All right. Good morning. If things go well and you've been looking for a miracle, it'll be this morning. Um, we've got some wonderful testimonies this morning um, to, to fill in for this Sunday. Um, I, got to, I got to listen to them in the first service, and it was just magnificent. And I hope you enjoy them, and they lift you up and strengthen you as much as they, they did for me. I have two announcements. One is the finance meeting this week, and... What was the other one, Angel? Yeah, I couldn't even make it from the back of the church to the front. Finance meeting and? Oh, finance meeting. Uh, there is a lunch and service at Okay. Uh, Thursday night. Okay, a lunch and Thursday. Thursday. That's okay. There's a letter welcoming the church to Right. And in the back, if you'd like it, um, there's a letter. Um, and again, let me, let me restart this. Um, in the first uh, service, we announced that we are now an affiliation of the Global Methodist Church, which actually wasn't true. So I, I apologize for that because we took the vote between the first service and the second with the council and it's been approved. So but now you guys are the first congregation to uh, be affiliated and have a church service as the Global Methodist Church. OK, so that's that's wonderful. And um, just so you know. If you refer to us in the local community, we are the First Methodist Church, Titusville, Pennsylvania. So any checks or anything that gets written out, that's our new official name um, going forward. Uh, yep, that's in the bulletin as well. Thank you. One last announcement. This is absolutely wonderful. Uh, happy Father's Day. Um, either you had a father or you are a father, which either one is a magnificent miracle, right? But there is a little gift for you and anybody you know. Uh, we're not, we have some of these. Um, this is actually will be a little historical memento as well. It's a little pocket knife, which guys don't ever have enough of them, in my opinion. But it says First Methodist Church, Titusville, PA, with the number on there and everything. So this will be the, uh, if you wanted to keep a little of the history, uh, uh, because, you know, the first uh, United Methodist Church is still near and dear to my heart, uh, what it was. And um, anyways, you can get a memento. Make sure you get one on the way out. And there's pens back there, too. So help yourself. Right, right. First United Methodist. So uh, I'm not going to take a marker and, and mark out anything. I'm just going to use it as it is. Um, is there any other announcements for the good of the body? No. What's next? I'll do the chives and I'll do my song and then we'll go into the reading. Okay.
Good morning, church. If you could stand, if you're able, for the call to worship. Lord, send me. Of your love. Lord, let me boldly go out to declare your great love. Lord, give me courage and strength to go out into the world and share your love. And now we will sing hymn number 710, Faith of Our Fathers. We're going to collect the offering now. And Patty's going to play us a wonderful song while we collect our, our offering.
Dear Heavenly Father, as we give back to you, which is already yours, please bless this, multiply it, and let it go to, to forward the gospel of Jesus Christ, to forward the grace, love, and mercy that's available to all of us if we just call on his name. In Jesus we pray this, amen. Okay, now we're going to sing hymn number 140, Great is Our Faithfulness. And I apologize if, if we're getting out of order, but um, one of the most important things is usually we, we probably do these in welcome and announcements and everything, but um, is there any praises or testimonies that anybody has today? Okay, is there any prayer requests that we can lift up for you guys? Good, I think. 
Okay, by a show of hands, any unspoken requests that we can lift up? There we go. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty God, uh, by the show of hands, we testify that you are alive and working and you do miracles, and we thank you for that. These unspoken requests that are near and dear on our hearts, they could be for healing, they could be for salvation, they could be for uh, repentance and strength to get out of, out of a sinful nature. We lift these all up to you. We know that you know what they are already. We know that you've heard this prayer already, but we're gonna lift them up to you and, and, uh, as a congregation, that wherever two or more are gathered, that uh, you will do great work in our lives. Dear Heavenly Father, please open our hearts and our minds to these testimonies tonight and, and let it be a wonderful worship to you. Um, let it strengthen us to, uh, to let us maybe be bold in our witness and our mission. These missions are, are overseas or out of the country, but dear Lord, our mission uh, is here. And just open our hearts to see when it's time for us to speak and uh, share the love and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. We're on to scripture, I believe. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. So we've got a couple, um, couple verses out of Matthew that I thought was fitting for the um, testimonies that are here today. Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Here now the word of God. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded to, to you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. All right. Next we have uh, some messages. I'm just going to preface this with... Um, um, I got to hear these earlier, and um, I just got a quick testimony. In the first service, Jerome picked out the music, and I forget what the last song was, I don't, and it doesn't matter, but what it said was, um, you, you are to go out, basically. And I, I picked out the one for the end of this service, but there was no, I didn't tell Jerome what was going on or anything like that, and this has happened so many times with him, and I look for these little indications that we are walking, walking in the will of God, that somehow he unified us without us even knowing. So I thank Jesus for that, and I thank him for, for uh, giving these, these speakers the uh, strength and courage to come up here and share with you what their great work is. The first uh, couple speakers we have is um, the Crab family. Come on up. They have a ministry down in the Philippines, and they do some great work down there. And also, as an announcement, Linda, as of what, last Thursday or Wednesday, Wednesday she is now a US citizen of the United States. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, good morning, church. Yeah, it's, it's good to be with you, and happy Father's Day, uh, and a special happy Father's to, Day to my, my earthly father, who's, who's here with us. Um, uh, for those of you who, who may know, not know, we have a ministry in the Philippines that we call Bethany's Hope. Uh, according to the Bible, Bethany was a village close to Jerusalem where the, uh, the poor and the sick lived. This ministry of ours in Santa Fe, uh, Philippines, is intended to uh, give hope to kids and families in need and ultimately uh, to present uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. We have a video that we'll show shortly here that shows uh, some of the work that took place during our most recent trip, which was in December of 2021 through June of 2022. Um, but before we show the video, uh, my wife would like to share with you part of her story. I was at the lowest point in my life when God opened my heart to his truth, and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I put my trust in him and laid down all my hopelessness and frustrations at his feet. 
Then God placed a burden on my heart to reach out for lost souls, help the poor, and feed the hungry children as I look and saw the poverty around me. At the beginning, I was skeptical because God knew I was struggling financially. But I was willing to do what God wants me to do because it is what we are called to. And I know how it is to be hungry and hopeless as I was on those shoes before. So I prayed that God would lead the way, and he did. When I met Brad, there was one common denominator that connected us, and it was mission. We both love to do missionary works. We decided to start, to start helping people and feeding children on his first visit in on 2010. As I watched people's smiles and children's joyful faces, it showed me the relief and glimpse of, of hope in their lives. This inspired us to name the ministry Bitanis Hope. It is a great privilege to be used by God for his purposes. God used my hopelessness to give hope to others and my frustrations to inspire others and children to fulfill their dreams by bringing them the knowledge of truth and pointing them to our one and only living hope, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. It reminds me of Romans 8.28 that says, God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. There are no words to express how grateful I am to my great and powerful God as he allowed me, a sinner and as wretched as I am, to be redeemed and to serve him in his ministry. Uh, one note on the video that you're going to see um, Partway through it, uh, you'll see a picture of a young boy named McCoy. It's the same picture that is out in the hallway, um, taken back in 2014. Uh, it was shortly after he had cataract surgery to, uh, in both eyes to re restore his vision. And uh, that surgery took place due to the financial support of, of this church and other individuals. Um, the next picture in, in the video that you'll see is of McCoy uh, on our last trip there uh, during 2022. And uh, he's, he's now 19 years old and a, um, truly a, a humble follower of, of Jesus Christ. Uh, he's doing good things in, in Santa Fe. Uh, also, we would like to thank the, the church and Mike Strawbridge's uh, Bible study class uh, for all of your continued support, both um, financially and uh, uh, prayerfully. Uh, we are very blessed and grateful to the Lord for what he is doing through, through all of you. I am Brad Crabb. And I am Linda Crabb. Once, Once broken, broken vessels, vessels but, but now, now used, used by God, God for his purposes. purposes. To, to God be all, all the glory. glory.
We're going to test Skip. Skip, I sent you a text. See if you could make a slide out of that, please. It'll be after Joe. Um, next up, thank you, Brad and Linda, uh, for coming and sharing and your great work, first of all. <clears throat> um, next we have up is Joe Gianni. Come on up, Joe. Um, I, I, I hear his testimonies once in a while when I'm sitting in his Bible study or in the hallways, and wonderful man of faith. Um, and I, I, I feel remiss that he hasn't been up here and maybe been able to talk about this earlier. But he's here now, and he's going to give it to us, and I think he'll be blessed. I asked John to give me a warning when I'm talking too much, and he already warned me. <laughs> thank you, thank you for having me this morning, and uh, I just want to share a little bit of, with you. Um, when I first uh, was introduced to the Lord, I had Mark Anthony's restaurant. Some of you probably remember that. Some of you probably got sick on the food there. I'm not sure, but um, I thought I was a uh, Pretty important person in the in the in the city here in the town, and uh, pretty arrogant. Like I said in the first service, I more arrogant than I am now, believe it or not. But um, you know, I was acting like I was I had it all together, and we were very much in debt at the restaurant. I think it was probably around sixty thousand dollars in debt, and I was still acting like everything was just fine. And every time when I turned that key. To, to go walk in that restaurant, I knew I was going to lose another hundred dollars. And there was a group that met in our banquet room, and it was a Christian group. And the guy that led the group was taking a lot of flack from uh, some of the people that uh, were in his group because we had a liquor license there. But he let them know that he really believed God wanted him to have this that particular meeting at our place. Well. Um, Praise God that he heard the Lord because that's the day I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And uh, if you ever want to hear a little more of the testimony, <clears throat> I would love to give that to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but shortly after that, I got into another group and I was asked if I was interested in going and doing mission work in Haiti. And uh, it was kind of true, but... Uh, Going to Haiti and the place Tahiti kind of sounds the same, but it's not. And uh, it was it's very poor there. Equ or, uh, Haiti is the poorest nation or country in the Western Hemisphere. But because I was a new Christian, uh, um, I wasn't sure whether I was going to go or not. And the Lord revealed to me in a dream, actually, and he confirmed, he gave me a confirmation. But in my dream, I was witnessing to a fellow employee. And I was telling him the story about when Jesus <clears throat> was on the shore after his crucifixion. And he asked Peter if he loved him. And Peter said, yes, of course I love you. And he asked him again. He said, Peter, do you love me? And, he, and Jesus again answered him, feed my sheep. And he asked him the third time. And he says, Peter, do you love me? And I can remember in the dream, it was very, it's very vivid. I can remember it. And the words I actually used in the dream, speaking to this fellow employee, I said, and Peter was really bummed out, I said. And Peter said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. And I woke up immediately from that dream. Immediately, the next thing was I was awake, fully awake. But all I had in my mind was Haiti. And it's funny because I didn't dream anything about Haiti. I didn't dream about any of my fears, anything like that. And that, that was a confirmation to me. So I agreed to go. And uh, I thought because I was a cook that I would be helping with food, which I did in part. And I thought maybe I'd just be helping carry luggage in that. So we get to Haiti and... Uh, we went to a place called Castle Haiti, which 
don't let the name fool you, <laughs> but it was it was very based, uh, uh, based, and um, but they had a swimming pool there, and we were waiting for an interpreter, and I was laying on my back in the pool, nice weather, nice and warm, and I thought to myself, man, if this is mission work, you can sign me up every time. But then that afternoon, the interpreter came, and we went into town, and we went to church. And the church was literally some very skinny log trees, branches that were stuck in the ground, and they had sheets around them to stop the wind and the dust from entering. And the people were raising their hands and praising the Lord for what the Lord had done for them and what the Lord had given them. And it really made me question what, what was wrong with me that I couldn't praise God like that with all these given me. And then later, Vinay, who was our interpreter, took us to his home. His home was probably 25 feet long, 10 foot wide, and it was split in half. And there was a family that lived and rented off of him in the other half. And we, the seven of us, crowded into the, his house around his kitchen table. He had a kitchen table and some places to sleep, and that was the extent of his home. And he, he held his hands out, and with all the pride you can imagine, he said, welcome to my home. And the Lord let me know that if I would have cried, I probably would have offended him. But I did cry that evening. I went home, and I, I just sobbed. Well... The first service that we that we actually shared in was it was the next day, and I had been reading about John the Baptist when he asked his apostles. He said, uh, he said he wanted them to ask Jesus, "Are you the one, or are we to look for another?" And Jesus answered uh, pretty pretty neat the way he answered. He said he didn't say yes, I'm the one. He said, "You go tell John what you've seen: the deaf hear, the blind see, the lame walk." The gospels preached to the poor. And I, sh I was sharing that story, and, and I said, you know, uh, we have physical eyes, but we have spiritual eyes, and we have spiritual ears, and we have spiritual legs, and we, we speak uh, a spiritual language, and we need those things healed. And uh, I, I probably shared like seven minutes, and... Uh, the guy that led the group, he got up after that and he said, how am I supposed to follow that? And I realized the very first thing I did was preach. And I, and I was shocked and I, and I was just so thankful and humbled that God would use me. Well, that humility didn't last very long. Um, I found myself on another mission trip and um, I've gone to Ecuador quite a bit, and most of you know that. And uh, when I was there, we visited a hospital. We, I was on a medical team at the time, and um, we visited this hospital. And this girl, this little girl was really sick. She was dying. She had double pneumonia. She was in an oxygen tent. And I had a brother that died of uh, double pneumonia when he was three and a half years old, so it was very special to me. And I asked the doctor, what could we do? And he said, well, there's really nothing the, mo the mother could she's gonna die because the mother can't afford the medicine. And so I said, well, write down the kind of medicine, I'll go to our clinic and I'll see if I can get it. And he said, well, this is very expensive medicine. It was an injectable antibiotic. So I went and the, the doctor there said, well, he, he didn't have it, but she needed Pedialyte, she needed vitamins, and she needed parasite medicine, which they had. But he says, you have to go to the pharmacy for this other medicine. And he said, it's very expensive. So the team said, you go to get it and we'll reimburse you. So I went there and they didn't have all that I needed. So I had to go to the hospital to buy the rest of it. I spent a total of $7, $7. And the Lord let me know it, it was the people that, 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 that came. It's the people, it's you. That I know some of you have given t for these trips and stuff, and it was because of you. I thought at first that woman, that little girl's life was only worth $7, but it wasn't. It was worth the money that it took f to fly there and to the tickets and the vaccinations and everything else. And, and uh, the next day, 
because penicillin, penicillin is still a miracle drug there. The next day, that little girl was in her mother's arms. You know, and I have a picture before and after at home. I wish I would have had taken a little more planning to show it. But God used these things. Well, like I said, the, the, the uh, humility didn't last very long, and I was thinking how great of a guy I was. And uh, I'm going to tell another story here about um, I was uh, on a dental trip. Uh, that we, we, I cooked for 110 people, myself, Dominic, and another guy. His name was Brian. And we went there, and we cooked for a dental team. This was in Ecuador. And uh, we had everything well caught up. We were working with a couple of Ecuadorian women, and we, we provided a buffet breakfast, a bag lunch, a sack lunch, and a buffet for supper. And we were way ahead, so we went out that night, and we went to a restaurant to get something to eat. And I got in some really bad food. And I got to say, I've never been as sick on a mission trip as this time. And I was just, just so sick and I woke up the next morning I was recovered but I was just so weak but we were well we were well enough ahead that I um I did go to uh I went with the team and uh, we went we were in the Andes Mountains and we were in this little store and Brian and Dominic and I were sitting there along with the Antonio our interpreter and uh this little guy came in shorter than me believe it or not and he had a he had a bowl of beans. They were fave beans. They were like they're like big lima beans, and uh, they were just steaming. He had this big smile on his face. And I looked at Dominic and I looked at Brian. And I said, "Listen, I've seen this before. If you don't want to eat, we got to get out of here because he's going to offer us something to eat." Brian was already out the door. I hadn't even finished the sentence. Dominic was getting up. And Antonio was laughing, and I said, "What's the matter?" And he said, "The guy asked." if you wanted to eat some of these beans. And I kind of told him half-truths, and I said, uh, well, I'm not really, really not hungry, and i just making up different excuses. And the Lord spoke to me and said, my goodness, just eat a bean, you know. And I did. It was very bland, and I, and I looked at him, I said, my grandmother makes these beans. I said, and when she makes them, she uses, of course, being Italian, garlic and olive oil, and pepper and he got this big smile on his face because apparently he had eaten them like that before and then one thing led to another and i said you know it's such a, a kind thing that you would offer food to us and i i was reminded of the verse where it says jesus knocks at the door of our heart and i shared it with him i says and if we'll open the door he'll come in and eat with us and I didn't realize it, but I looked around, and there were people standing around listening to me talk to him about the Lord. Six people received Jesus Christ at that time. And I got to tell you, all I wanted to do was get out of there because I didn't want to eat a bean. You know, <clears throat> another trip we were on, um, we had glasses. Dr. Scott Kennedy has gone on several trips there. And... Uh, he got us reading glasses for 80 cents a piece. And we, we bought like four or 500 reading glass, pair of reading glasses. And uh, we, were, we would go and we would give them out. And we were at this one community, and it was in the middle of the day, and there were no takers for the glasses. It's because the men were working, and the men were the only ones that were literate. The women, they, they couldn't read, and they had no reason to get them. And I'm thinking, man, we really missed it on this one, you know. And uh, finally, an old lady walked up to my wife, and they, they, she asked my wife, will they help me thread a needle? And my wife said, yeah. And we had like 50 women in line to get sewing glasses. And the reason I'm telling you this story, and, and, and even the other ones, is we were just there. We made ourselves available, and God ordered our steps and he and he and he brought the you know because we had willing unwillingness you know to to be there and it doesn't matter you know the bible says and and the the verse that was read was you know going to all the world and it's but it says in jerusalem judea samaria and the other most parts of the earth and i know some share a lot here 
and I and I got to tell you, doing that myself. One time we went door to door in Titusville. This is while I had the restaurant and a bar, going door to door, witnessing the people, some which were customers and supported me very much at the bar, <laughs> would open the door. And I got to tell you, it's the hardest mission trip I've ever been on. It's right here. And I used to think I was really something by going to these other these other countries, but it is harder here. But, you know, whether you have a talent of being a clown, Charlie, tying a balloon, or Catherine and, and, and Skip bringing a puppet team, you know, I, I used to think so much of myself, but they weren't coming to see me. They weren't coming to see a preacher. They were coming to get a balloon or see something funny or or watch the puppets or get free medicine and glasses. And if it wasn't for the people that were giving and sharing and praying, it would be unsuccessful. You know, it is it is a body sacrifice. It is something that we all do together. And I, I just appreciate all the people that pray and 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 give and, and are like minded. And uh, I don't know, do I have time for another story? Really? Now I gotta think of one. <laughs> no, it, it, you would you would not believe uh, we, we were we were on this last trip, Doctor Zayer and I, and we went to a poor area town that Pastor Alonzo took us to, and there was a woman, an old woman, sitting in the yard with these reeds by her. Some of you have seen the pictures that are in some of the studies we're in, and this woman. She had nothing. We saw the inside of her house. She didn't, have, she didn't even have a bed. She must have slept in a, in a chair. And there was a little part in the corner where they, she raised guinea pigs because a lot of the quichua in South America, that's, they eat guinea pigs. And I've tried it. It's not bad. It's not like... But um, uh, her, she said her son doesn't even come to see her anymore. And there are people that contributed finances for us. And... Uh, the Lord moved on Dr. Zayner's heart, and uh, he gave her $100, which was an incredible amount of money for her. And we also were able, from the money that was given to us, we, um, we bought her, we bought the community. We were giving out rice and tuna and olive oil and beans. We would make these little packages, and we would, we would, uh, we would deliver them. Well, she, she received two of them. You know, all the Lord wants us to do is make ourselves available. He'll fill in, he'll fill in the blanks because we, we don't know what we're, what we're called to do. And, you know, I'd like to say I have like this bat phone. If you ever watch Batman where it's a direct line to the counselor, you know. But let's, let's take a step. You know, I remember uh, just a week ago I was talking with you at the, say, at the, at the parking lot in front of the dollar store. We talked to people, at, you know, wherever, John, last time you talked about, we talked about people just in Walmart. We all have a ministry just to make yourself available. It's, I think that's the main thing. We, we are all missionaries. We all, we all serve in other places, you know, in different places because God wants to reach everyone, and he does. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. That's uh, some of the simple things we do or simple things we take for granted changes people's lives. And that's just an amazing thing. That's, uh, I think that's a God thing. Um, so just a quick synopsis on um, missions. Uh, Joe's absolutely right. Your mission maybe isn't in Ecuador, maybe not Haiti, maybe not the Philippines, but your mission is at Walmart or Giant Eagle, or maybe it's at the mill, or maybe it's at the, uh, for me, I go down to the bike trail. Maybe that's where it is, you know, and it's just maybe given a, a little testimony. One of the things that I will do is, I think I was behind somebody in the, in the line in Walmart, and she was fumbling around or something or they were fumbling around and finally something came together they found the money they needed or whatever 
And I just say, hey, it looks like somebody upstairs was looking out for you. You know, and then sometimes that turns into a whole discussion of your Savior. Maybe they're saved, but it turns into a whole discussion of, of how they love Jesus as well. Boy, does that help brighten your day. Um, I know I said something to a young lady um, or a woman. Um, uh, it was when I was living at Cherry Tree. I said something, well, the, the kids come out of surgery and he's doing good. And she just says, thank you, Jesus. And boy, what a powerful thing that was. So, yes, I, I remembered this. I couldn't find it, so that's what I was looking up, and I gave it to Skip. So there's a, there's a quote on the, uh, on the screens. Um, even the world sometimes get it right, it gets it right, but people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And sometimes they can't hear the gospel until you take care of some of those physical ailments or until they're in a better, better place. So let's do that. Um, let's see here. I think we're winding up, which is wonderful. Uh, we've got another hymn, hymn 593. This is the only one that, that I had asked for because this speaks to, uh, this is a wonderful hymn. This is the one I remembered, but I, I think it was Nancy had to help me out. <laughs> uh, but we're going to sing that to close out and then a benediction.
Dear Heavenly Father, the Almighty God, please use us. Please strengthen us, give us courage, give us discernment and wisdom for the right words to speak your glory everywhere we go. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace.